Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we worship your name for today again. We rededicate ourselves into your hands, Lord, that all we have, all we are, and all we ever hope to be will be yours and yours alone in Jesus' name. Amen. But we pray as we hear your word together, you will inspire us and you will bring us where you want us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Welcome again, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure seeing everyone together. And I want to encourage you as you keep on with the Lord. Uh, he has always something good to give those who are consistent with him. And that will be your story in Jesus' name. Amen. We are looking at the word of God together, and it is from a Bible passage. You see, Jesus Christ had this holy habit of fellowshipping with his disciples. And any time they came near, he was always talking to them about matters of the kingdom of God. So today we are looking at one of such discussions Jesus Christ had with the people that followed him. And this discussion took place not too far from the time that he went to the cross. We have read it in our text um, in John chapter 12. Let's go back to John's Gospel, chapter 12. John chapter 12. We read from verse 24. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. I'm sure some of us may have had the privilege of sowing seeds. And I'm not talking about, you know, this uh, sowing seed that you sow the seed to the pastor. You remember those preachers? No, that's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about literal seed, the corn. How many of us have planted something? Uh, beans. Wonderful. And so we can all relate to this. You know, sometimes as a preacher, you think, oh, look, these are modern people. Uh, they have not been sowing. Now, so generally speaking, this is the picture that we have here. That corn of wheat falls into the ground. And what you discover is that it dies. You say, what's going on here? It first dies. I know when I was a child, you will plant that thing. You know, this echo is just not helping me. So you put that thing in the soil. And after a few days, you will go and then you will say, okay, what is happening here now? And after three or four days, your patience is rewarded. You see something green coming out. But it's not what you have put on the ground that is coming out. It's something new. It's new life. And if you nourish, nurture, and feed that thing, from one corn, one seed that falls into the ground, something comes up. I'm sure when you go to the open market, especially June, July, August, you see that thing. And in other places, like if you go to the street of Paris, I think they will be doing it in Amsterdam also, in those large cities where you have people uh, of uh, a similar color. You understand? You will see them on the streets. If you go to a place like Saint Denis, 
uh, and all those uh, suburbs of Paris, you will see those things being roasted. And it will remind you of when you were in your own country. But all that, it tells us about something like 80 or so, or 150 of those corns will be in one cup. And the seed will generate more than one cup. But that seed first dies before it becomes multiplied. Doesn't it sound strange to us? Think about it. You would think something dies, then it's gone, it's forgotten. Jesus Christ says, as it happens in the physical, the same thing in the spiritual. When Jesus Christ was to come, people were thinking the big Messiah is coming, trumpets all over the place. And I told them, you know, I'm going to conquer the world. I'm going to reproduce. Multitudes are going to be blessed through me because I am that seed of Abraham. Prophesied in Genesis that in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. But you know what? Before that is going to happen, I will die. It blew their minds. And Jesus Christ here telling us, if that corn of wheat doesn't die, it will die. Do you understand me? That corn. If you don't plant it, what eventually happens? But it will not multiply. And exactly that is what we are talking about this morning. Reproducing like a corn of wheat. This is, this is basically what the spiritual life is all about. If you want to multiply, if you want to reproduce, something must happen. And before Jesus Christ said this, in fact, at that time, in chapter 7 and 8, especially of John, you will see a lot of opposition that Jesus Christ faced. But in this chapter 12, it's seen as if his, his popularity had risen. There were some Greeks that came and they said, we want to see Jesus. And in verse 19, they say, look, don't, don't you see, you don't prevail anything. The, whole, the world is gone after him. And generally, you know, when your approval rating goes up, when your number of followers goes up, you don't want it to come down. And at that time, Jesus Christ, because he already knew man, he never put his confidence in man. He never looked for the approval of man. He was focused on God's will for him. And the will of God for him at that time was not to be a king, but to reign by going down into the soil and dying. And exactly that is what has made the life of Jesus to count. When you're not saying you are praying in Jesus' name, we never knew Jesus. Jesus was not born here, not in Europe, not in America. He was born in a manger in a place far away. But the whole world now, we talk about Jesus. And those of us that by God's grace we have received the message to be born again, you know when you call that name Jesus, it means something special. Because that's the name that opens heaven's doors. But it's not just only for us now, it's for all the earth, right from the time he came until the time the trumpet shall sound. Millions of people. That's why the Bible says kings shall bring their glory into that kingdom. And that's the Jesus we're worshiping. That's the Jesus we're serving. That's what makes him so special. That in every detail of your life, when you come to crossroads in your life as a believer, and at that time you kneel down, you say, in the name of Jesus, and heaven opens and you receive an answer, it all happened because he went to the cross and he died. And on the third day, he rose again. You will rise with him. Amen. Now you said amen to that. If I say you will die to him, with him, oh, okay. You will rise with him. Amen. But don't worry. God has a purpose for your life. He has a purpose for my life. 
as Jesus' life did count, the same way he wants your life to count. He wants my life to count. So if, you, if I'm following him, then I will be like him. So what happened to him will happen to me. Good things will happen to you in Jesus' Amen. name. Now, we're looking at just two sides to the coin of today. You remember the side the scriptures showed us? I was with the, our beautiful uh, uh, youth group there. Something is going to happen. We will do that in the, in the meeting. Um, so great things are happening. And the teacher was telling them, oh, there are two sides of the side the scriptures today. One side is God pure, perfect, and the other side is the opposite. And in the summary, our pastor used a word that you have to go to the dictionary, the dictionary to be able to interpret that. He said they are diametrically opposed. You understand? Have you ever heard about that one? You need to be a doctor of philosophy to hear that. Praise the Lord. But in, in the same place, we are going to look at the two sides today. There is a mandate that God has given us. And everybody says, yes! But there is a mystery about this mandate. And so with a few minutes we are going to have together, God is going to, you are going to take something home. You are going to treasure that thing because you are going to pray about it. You are going to embrace it. You are going to say, Lord Jesus, I want it. I don't think I have strength for it, but I know you will help me. Amen. Amen. And that's the beauty about the Christian life. You come to a place in your life, I don't think it's you alone. No. You know, sometimes they look at the pastor. The pastor is wonderful. pastor knows everything. He knows all the Bible. The devil, he crushes him. If the devil comes from one side, he crushes him. Comes to the other side, the, there is no temptation for the pastor. The pastor is, uh, you know, almost God. You understand? <sighs> we are in the same category. Amen. Amen. But by the grace of God, we overcome the enemy. We are all children of God together. By the grace of God, when he comes, the Bible says when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. And so if you know the promises of God, if I know the promises of God, the victory I enjoy, you will enjoy the victory Amen. in the name of Jesus. Because we are all, we all have, everything is available unto us. Jesus Christ says, all things are yours through the Apostle Paul. So, let's look. Why should we reproduce? So that's the first thing we are looking at. Well, why should we reproduce? And in that text, you will see, uh, in John chapter 12, uh, it opens with a beautiful thing. In verse 23, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man shall be glorified. I ask you, why should we reproduce? So that we will be glorified. We will be glorified. Amen. Amen. If you go to do business, it's because you are hoping for gain. Do you know there are people who always complain? They complain about everybody. When they are working in a company, do you know the people who complain about management most? This is our management. They are only taking money. They are not doing it. Who are the people that are complaining about that? They are not in the management. You understand? <laughs> Praise the Lord. When they get to the management, they don't complain about the management they because they are the management. And people always complain. Hey, what is going to happen? You don't need to complain. God has meant you for glory. You will be glorified. Amen. So God wants you to reproduce so that you will, glory, you will be glorified with him. That's what is going to happen to you. In Philippians chapter 4, you're going to see, you are going to see benefits. And please, let's open the Bible together. Philippians chapter 4. I, I, I would like every, everybody now, we are going to read. Everybody is going to read. Amen. Amen. Whether you have tree Bible or English Bible, everybody is going to read. I, I think, you know, what, what I would like to see is that if we can find a place to put this capstock, that when I look from the pulpit, I can see our brother in the tree class directly. Not today, not today. We are not going to do it today. Uh, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, and this is our gallery. Maybe we, we will move 
something is going to happen. And then our people online, when they put their camera, we see their beautiful faces. You know, sometimes we see name, we see something, and, and then we want to see their beautiful faces. Amen. Amen. So that everybody is connected together. Are, are we in Philippians chapter 4? Yes. Verse 1. One, two, go. And long for my joy and crown. So oh, 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 who wrote this? Paul. Oh, who was he addressing to? The Philippian church. Oh, why? How was the church founded? Who preached to them? Paul and his company. Say, because he, repro he had reproduced. You, you see the way he's addressing them. You know, as some pastors, they say the church uh, might thorn in the flesh and all. No, 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 not Paul. Let's read it together. Look, look, look at it. Therefore, my, my brethren, what does he call them? Dearly beloved. And then, long for. And then, my joy. And then, my crown. Hallelujah. You know, when you are ministering and there is fruit and you are reproducing. I, you know, I've told you about my mother. You know? Amen. Amen. I, I never thought, I, 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 when I was in the primary school, I, I, I didn't know that teachers had mother. I don't know I was a child. Eh? So how could teacher had mother? Because teacher was. Amen. So pastors also have mother, of course. Amen. And one of our pastors even has his own mother here uh, supporting him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I will come from, I have told you this one, and you will hear it another time again, eh? because my, my mother is dead long ago, so I keep on telling the story. I will come from school, primary school, and if I was hungry, thank God I'm married now, so my wife knows when I'm hungry. Uh, but uh, you know, as a child, I will be hungry. I would not see what was on there. My, my legs would just be on everything. But my mother would be, would be energizing me. And this lady, the son of so so, so the son of so so, so so You know that kind of a thing? Uh -huh. That's what you are talking about. That's the way you treat your own children. Our mother, the number, you, you know, when you have a child, a little child, you compose song for them. This is what we are seeing here. When you are reproducing, you have something to, to joy about. It fills you with joy. Say, so my joy, my crown, this is the reason why I'm laboring. This is the place, that the reason I'm praying. We, all the persecution and everything. You know what he suffered in Philippi? They beat him and Silas. And when they, you remember that thing in the, in the, in the, in the, in the um, Philippian jailer? And all those kind of things. Like, the reason I've been doing all this, I can see that the church is established. I can see the fruit. You are going to multiply like that. That's the reason. When you multiply, when you reproduce, it fills you with joy. It's somebody who is barren that will not be, 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 be filled with joy. You see, you bear the fruit of righteousness. And you will be happy in the name of Jesus. Yeah? Those who are not fruitful, the Bible says, they are near unto cursing. That we read from Hebrews chapter, chapter 6. God will not curse you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are laboring and laboring and laboring and the thing is not bringing forth fruit, you say, what is all this? But when there is fruit, there is blessing. It makes you to have blessing from God. It's like a tree of life. The Bible says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. It gives life. It gives vitality. Uh, do you know sometimes when you are tired, uh, you know, Praise the Lord. Uh, 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 I, I don't know if you have noticed it. Uh, people, when you have children, when they are small, you know, there is a kind of joy. When they are now big, they, some of them make trouble. Eh? And some mothers will say, don't kill me. I didn't kill my mother. You understand? <laughs> hey, but after some time, they become older. And then they begin to get picking of their own. The joy of the Opa and Oma. You look at it. Baby, <laughs> baby. Hey, you see Opa, Oma beginning to dance? You remember when you had the father or the mother that is, has now begotten now. And then you now see that. And that's why when I take my walk, since I don't have uh, grandchildren yet, you understand? Just pray for me. <laughs> when I see those uh, people pushing something, sometimes I wait. I don't, how old is he? <laughs> you know, it's not my baby, but you know, it's always like that. 
Amen. Amen. And that is the joy when there is fruit. Your life will be fruitful in Jesus' name. Amen. So you, 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 it stimulates you. It's, it gives you self, you know, a kind of lasting joy. But so if you are given, so those who are focusing on themselves, I, me, and myself, what is to rejoice about? A life that is not shared. A life that is not multiplied. I'm just focusing on what I can get. Somebody says, well, I get all I can, and I can all I can get. You understand? You put it in the can. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> so that's the way some people do. You don't, what's the joy? But when you are sharing your life, when you are bearing fruit, and your fruit is bearing fruit, that's the joy. That's the joy. And you don't get there until you fall to the ground and reproduce. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. All of us are going to read together. And I want uh, my brethren online to uh, all unmute their microphone and, and, and just let us read it together. Uh, where are we reading, my brethren? Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 24. Proverbs, let, let, let's quickly move to that place. Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 24. Please unmute, unmute everybody, and everybody here, here, we are going to echo it together. Are we there, my brethren? One, two, go. There is that spirit that I read, that is the same, and then with all that more than is me, but is tended to poverty. Amen. There is somebody who scatters. You understand? The, 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 the source here is for the sower. Uh, it's, it's agriculture. Uh, you scatter it. That is, you sow it here and there. There is one that scatters. And what happens to him? Increase. He increases. But there is somebody who withholds more than is necessary. In other words, he eats and does not provide for the seed to be sown. What happens to him? It tends to what? Poverty. Because in the time to come, when others are reaping, he has not enough to reap because he has not sown enough. So, if you scatter, you are going to gather. If you withhold and you say, well, if I sow this, that's why some people remain poor for life, because they never sow. They never, and I'm not telling you, remember, I'm not asking you to give me money. I'm talking about personally going, investing, investing in your own spiritual life, investing in education, your education, investing in, even in, in doing some work, even at the place of work, investing. Some people, they just, no, 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 it's too cold outside. Those are the people, they don't become fruitful. You have to, as it were, lose something to gain something. In John chapter 15, you will see such a believer that is bearing fruit, something is going to happen in his life. John's Gospel chapter 15, we are going to all read verse 8. John chapter 15, verse 8. One, two, go. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. How much fruit you will bear? Much fruit. Much fruit. It is then that we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you already can picture the joy that comes when you are bearing fruit. The right kind of fruit. Because when God sows righteousness into your life, what kind of fruit should you bear? It's the fruit of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Now, the quick question is, how then do we reproduce? So that's our second point today, the mystery of what? Reproduction. What is the mystery here? And then we now go back. So John's Gospel, chapter 12, where we have read before. Let, 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 let's read now um, from verses 22, uh, 24 to 26. Then we, we will begin to see uh, how it works. Uh, are we there? Yes. Uh, uh, people are faster than the pastor today. Amen. Amen. 
So you see, um, they, when, when I teach people, I, I, I ask them, do you understand? And then they say yes. I say, okay. What I mean by do you understand is that when the teacher, I, the teacher, when I'm making a mistake, you'll be able to correct me. Do you understand? Then they, 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 you understand? So, okay, do you understand, brethren? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you, should, you, should, you are faster. You have reached the, the, the place faster, so you should understand better. <laughs> Amen. God will make you wiser than your teachers in Jesus' yeah. name. We read together from verse 24. One, two, go. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Thank you. Now you can see here what the Lord is saying. He's saying, if you love your life, you're going to lose it. If you hate your life, you're going to gain it. You keep it unto life eternal. And my people will say, how can I hate my life? Ah, that's what it means to die. Because people will look at you, they, they will say, ah, all this following Jesus, obeying the word of Jesus, are you not uh, taking it too far? That's what people will say. But you see, you know what you are doing. God will give you wisdom. Amen. You know, sometimes people will look at you. And they will say, do it this way. The way we are teaching you. <laughs> In this country. If you Jesus, 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 you won't prosper. <laughs> Even the people that are preaching to you, do you know what they do at home? <laughs> that, is, that is man. Because, of course, don't be surprised if they say that. Because they have not known the person that you have known. They have not known the truth that you have known. You are the one that will make up your mind, okay, what am I doing? And everybody talks about Tesla, Tesla, Tesla today. You remember? How long had the man been busy doing the thing? How many millions did he bury in the thing? Some people are looking, people are looking this, man is crazy. this man is crazy. Many, many years ago. And it's one of the pro most profitable <laughs> companies in the world, in Europe. You know, I mean, uh, 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 there is no company that is as profitable. In, in, uh, the, most of them are from that country, uh, the US. The Europeans are, we are looking and following them. Because when they begin to do it, okay, I want to do, I want to go to the moon. Uh, are you a country? That you go to the moon. When the people went to the moon, they were thinking about country. All the laws about territorial occupation of the moon, they have centered on country. There was never a vision that an individual or a business could go to the moon. It, it didn't exist. 1967, all these Apollo things. It didn't exist because it was countries. Russia, uh, USSR against, uh, against uh, America. You know, we are going to process it. But now, you could have SpaceX and all those things happening. It takes time. And people will say, they, they, they will say, your head has turned. That's the thing, that Jesus. It's not, it's not only for you. Some people will think that some of the things you are facing now, <laughs> maybe it is now. My, my father, when I got converted, he said, in that day they are church, there is something to give them to drink. <laughs> it's not new. It's not new. Now people will say, oh, okay, they, they, when the, the Bible is turning their head. But you should understand that except the corn of wheat falls into the ground and that you hate your own life as it were, you put your life on the line. If you are not ready to put all your life there, you are not going to get much out of it because you can't be half pregnant. Have you ever seen so, a woman? And that woman is 50% pregnant. No, it's either you are pregnant or either. When you go, uh, our sisters, our mothers are here. When you go to do, <laughs> to do the test, and then they say, okay, it, 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 it's positive or negative? Is there anything that is in between? And you do the test, and say, it's becoming positive. It, it was negative, but it's becoming positive. Uh, uh, no. It's the same thing. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, there is nothing in between. It's either you are in or you are not in. God will keep you in, in Jesus' name. So there is a mystery here. It begins by dying. That's what they call it. it is a paradox. 
And when you talk about it, it's paradox. You know, that's another big word. What is a paradox? If they say the way up is where? Is down. That is what they, ah, you want to go up, but then you go down. The way to increase, it will do what? To decrease. The way to get is what? To give. Amen. Amen. The way to grow is to bow. That is what they call paradox. That's what Jesus Christ is saying here. You know, people are always saying, hey, I want to, I will get everything. I will ride on everybody. Such people don't make it. You have to understand is the principle of life. And the principle of life is that you, ha you have to sow before you can reap. And what you sow will determine what you reap. If you sow corn, you are going to reap corn, but in multiples. If you sow pride, you are going to reap pride and arrogance, but in multitude. If you sow hatred, you are going to reap hatred. But how much hatred? Of course, in multitude. There are some people, people don't want to even see them. Now, you remember people that have gone overseas many years ago? They are even dead. They went there to make slaves or to kill people. Even their own people now, when they say they are starting, oh, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Madman, pull it down, wicked man, and he has died. So whatever you sow, you will reap. The Bible says, you know, God cannot be mocked. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption, you will reap death. If you sow to the spirit, prayer, love, studying the word of God, you know, obeying the scriptures, you're going to reap life eternal. It's just the way it works. If you sow a crooked way, eh? you tell people in Africa, or wherever they are coming from, hey, come here. There is a tree here. Once you go under that tree, you'll be catching money. And you send pictures to them. You go to the city center, and then you take pictures with uh, cars that are not your own, and then you send them to other people. Say, come. And when they come, you now say, okay, we'll show you the tree. <laughs> That's to deceive people and to get their money. You think you are smart? You will repeat in abundance. I pray you will not be like them. Amen. And if you have been doing that, I plead with you, repent, because it's not the right way. So what was the thing? Well, it is very easy. Self, that self, that thing must die before it can live. Yeah? Instead of attracting attention, you give attention. Instead of receiving praise, you give praise. Those who focus on themselves, they can't reproduce. To reproduce, life cannot revolve around your will, around your ease, around your convenience. Now, you look at our nursing mothers. Uh, they brought a baby to church this, uh, this, this, this morning. And I was singing, I, mean, I was hearing the singing of the baby even when I sat down here. And they don't respect musical notes. They sing what they like to sing. And the mother will wake up. I wonder, I, I hope the fathers also wake up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, I've told you, I had a, a, a group leader, he and the wife, uh, they divided the thing. Uh, if the baby cries before 2 a.m., it's your turn. If it's after 2 a.m., it's my turn. So, if the baby cries, <laughs> and when 2 a.m. will pass and the baby will cry, the other one, <laughs> you do this to the other one, it's your turn. It's your turn. Amen? Amen? But you see, the nursing mother or nursing father, you forfeit your pleasure, your comfort. Why? Because of a little baby who cannot help itself. But your goal one day, this baby will grow. We become old and we have a family of our own. You see, you have that picture. You have that goal. And because of that, you endure. You endure the pain. There is a joy that the baby brings you by being in the world, but there is a future joy. Oh, this one, I'm going to invest in my baby. I'm going to invest. And, and you know, there is a kind of joy. That is the reason why you are sowing. You will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we as believers, 
what does it mean practically for us? Number one, you empty yourself. Self is the thing that is going to hinder you. Eh? And what does that mean? You, your, your ideas, your will, your plans, your ambition, and you surrender everything to Jesus. In fact, that's the way Jesus Christ himself did it. He said, I come to do your will, O God. In other words, thank God for the education you have given me, O. Thank God for my beauty. Thank you for, but Lord, what is your will for my life? You begin by emptying yourself. If you are so full of yourself, what is convenient for you, your ideas and your, you will not, follow, you will not make progress. You won't make progress because you are too full of yourself. That old life, remember the con, it must first go into the ground and die, and then new life comes. If you don't exchange the old life for the new, you will not have the new. So you empty yourself, of self, and then you begin to learn. Learn from Jesus. There is a way Jesus does things. In uh, Matthew chapter 11, we are all going to read together, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Let's, let's open quickly, Matthew chapter 11. From verse 28 to verse 30. Are we there, my brethren? Yes. One, two, go. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus Christ says, learn from me, I'm meek and lowly in heart. If you are learning from Jesus, you will not be proud. If you are learning from Jesus, you will not be arrogant. If you are learning from Jesus, you will not be rebellious. If you are learning from Jesus, you will not be stubborn. If you are learning from Jesus, you will, you will be able to sacrifice. Huh? People that are too conscious of themselves... They are not learning from Jesus. So we need to learn from Jesus. They say, learn from me. And, and number three, you don't dictate to God. You let God dictate to you. You don't say, Lord, I give my life unto you, but don't touch my area of marriage. Oh, God, I give myself to you, but don't touch my wardrobe. I, I just want to, uh, and if you, if you come near the word of God, you know, you, you know the path of least resistance. Water always flows to the path of least resistance. There are some believers that are like that. Anything that has to do with cross, they say, cross me out of it. When you are talking about biscuits and uh, all those things, I am happy. But there is a way. You, you cannot always be doing convenient things and, 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 and learn to make breakthrough, even in ordinary life. Have you ever seen somebody who became a professor and then he never wanted edu education, I mean, uh, examination? I, at the time of exam, okay, I won't come to school. My, I just want to become a professor. You, you, you never find such people. You have to go through something. You have to. And it's always a joy because you have a goal for your life. You want to be. And some, sometimes you are praying, oh, God, m melt me, make me, mold me. I want to be the best I can be. And God says, yes, I've answered your prayer. And he opens the avenue for your, tr for your training. He says, ah, what's, what, what's happening? You, you do not even understand that that is the answer to your prayer. If, when God answers your prayer, I mean, what do you want to do? It's just like a woman. Oh, God, I want many children. How many we want? I can find. If I can have 20, I will have them. If I can have And then you are pregnant for the first one. What's the problem? I said, take this thing out of my young kid, it's out of my bed. What's all this inconvenient? Hey, you wake up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, what's, what's all that? I want to maintain my body. I don't want any. I, I want to. Uh, then God has answered the prayer. You are the one not answering the prayer. Amen. Amen. It's the same thing spiritually. You are going to be trained. You are going to be subjected to. Because there is the flesh. I mean, children that are not trained, what do they become? They become wayward. They become unmanageable. There are some things that will grow. Weed will grow without any, any miracle. It takes somebody to take the weed out. You have to take the weed out. Uh, suppose, uh, you know, some people who say, well, anytime I smile, 
I want my teeth to be white. And you never brush the teeth. And they say, ah, what's all this one? Some of them, they go and they even take chemical. They will say, this is whitening. And they will do it. And they, some of them will stay there. Ting, ting, ting. <laughs> and then you will say, if you never want to do that. I say, I know, the only thing I like is that I want, uh, you know, chicken, chewing gum, and all those things. Before you know it, the, 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 there will be so many holes in the thing. And it, 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 everything will be gone. And there will be nothing for anybody to see. But if you make up your mind, and you say, well, I have a goal in life. I want to be the best Christian heaven can make me. And God will say, Amen. I will give you the opportunity. I will provide for you. But then you don't dictate to God. What do you do? You let God. Uh, I lost my audience today. Oh. Okay, God will give you euros. Amen. Amen. God will give you food. Amen. Amen. If you don't have a job, God is going to provide in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, all of you that are traveling, all of you that are having business, you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. But then, don't dictate to God. God will dictate to you. Amen? Amen. Ah. Amen. You, you understand? It's the nature of man. We will go through it together because when we do this, we are going to be enjoying Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, do not look at your own advantage. Seek the benefit of others and seek to do what God commands. Don't just be looking. And we're not looking at the things of your own. Looking at the things of others. Number five, deny yourself some comfort so that you can live spiritually. <laughs> if you don't deny yourself, deny yourself to pray. Somebody they said, oh, it's time we shall fast. You know what the, uh, the, the adult man said? But I will be hungry. Uh, what's, the, what's the idea? <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, if you fast, okay, hunger will come. But do, does anybody, has anybody ever died fasting for one day? Who oh, no, do as if that food? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. So you have to invest something. Oh God, I want miracles in my life. It's time for night VG, they are not there. How will the miracle come? You know, there are some people, they, they, they say, uh, uh, time of GCK is coming. All I want to do is I just want to lie down. When the, when the man of God is praying, that's the time. Oh God. In fact, some of them even want to program it on their app so that the miracle will come through the app to them. They don't want to do anything. But you have to desire. You hear people, they say, well, I have been coming and I was praying. I said, God, when the miracle is going to happen, I'm not going to be. And then they are praying and they are praying and they are praying and praying. And God answers the prayer. It is sweet testimony. But when there is laziness, you have to, to take that one out of your life. Number six, be patient. Set time aside to seek God and set aside resources to help others in a godly way and to do it consistently. Consistently. Be not weary in doing good. For in due time, you are going to reap if you don't faint. You keep on doing it consistently, 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 consistently. Number seven, humble yourself. Let go of your status, your age, your education, and reach out to others and help them up. You are not going to say, ah, wait, oh. You know all of us are sitting there in church together. You don't even know who is who. Uh, if you know my status, you are not going to wait. Cool down. It is God who promotes. Don't worry. God knows you. He knows what you are sacrificing. Praise the Lord. Uh, you see some of our brethren that are coming here, and then maybe uh, our brethren that have come newly, maybe from, 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 from Africa, uh, and you see the way they humble themselves. You, you, you don't know that many of them are highly educated people. You won't know. You won't know. Amen. Amen. We just move together. We, we just move together. There is no, you, won't, you won't see it at all. That's Christianity. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, that's joyful. That's, that, that's something encouraging. And you don't see the, the pastor bragging on everybody and say, hey, go and sit down there. Why? We're all brethren. Amen. Amen. But it is God who promotes. 
And God is going to promote you in Jesus' name. Amen. As you, 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 you let go. And number eight, believe God and put your focus on eternity. You know, God is faithful. He will reward your sacrifice as you persevere. Have we learned anything today? What will be your prayer as you go? Lord, help me. I'm giving my life to you so that I die to self and I will be able to live spiritually. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you know that's where to start. Lord Jesus, you died for me. I'm giving my life back to you. Let's rise up to pray. You want to just begin to ask the Lord to help you personally. What, what will your life worse, be worse? What are you going to, what are you going to, what is hindering you from growing spiritually? Those are the things to commit to God in prayer.